And welcome into the John Neighbors Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and appreciate each and every one of you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon. Happy Friday to all of you out there. We're going to hear from Barrett Salee a little bit later talking about rivalries and also the quarterback position for Arkansas over the past 15 years. Really interesting stuff. But we know that during this time of year, there's always these little graphics getting thrown up on social media that people are responding to and debating because that's just what happens when things are slow. And if I had a nickel for every time that I've seen an SEC team's football schedule gets put up and says, the so-and-so team will have blank amount of wins, and then people start debating and arguing in the, the chat and into the comments and everything. And I got tagged in a lot of these over the week because a uh, few people, people I know, uh, said about Arkansas and they gave their takes on it and everything. So it, it was just interesting. It's intriguing and it's fun. It's all in good fun. But I decided that, you know what, if, if everyone's wanting to talk about it, let's just do where it stands right now. Cause listen, we are still 83 days away. Jeremy sprinkle days away from Razorback football. And so there's a lot of time, a lot of things that can change during that point. And since I always get accused of being a little bit of a Homer and gassing up the football team and the expectations that come along with it, I figured, what the heck? Why not just go ahead and give the early June season game-by-game game predictions for the Razorback football team in 2024? Now, I'm going to be honest. I know a bit about each of these teams, what do they have returning, what their style's like, what the matchup's like, and everything. But as far as just going in through the in-depth analysis, there's still a lot of pieces and a lot of things that are moving with a lot of these teams, Arkansas being one of them. So let's go ahead and put up the schedule right now and dive into it. This is the Arkansas Razorback football schedule for 2025. Electric. Now, I will say, before we get into the games, this Razorback football schedule, I'm not going to say it's favorable, and I'm not going to say it's easy, but it might be the easiest schedule Arkansas's had in quite some time. Even though it still may be death row, it just may not be as long of a death row. You know what I'm saying? So I think that our, I think the SEC felt sorry for Arkansas whenever they really boned them in that COVID year of saying, oh, you got those eight SEC games. Well, how about this, Arkansas? Even though you've had two of the worst years historically, even though you have a brand new head coach who's never even had spring practice before because it got canceled, here's Georgia and Florida. So Arkansas had to navigate through that, and I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, this schedule in the SEC is trying to make amends and trying to make up for that. Maybe I'm giving the SEC too much credit, but still, it's a solid schedule. I've seen a lot worse. In fact, I saw with the ESPN FBI, they actually had Arkansas not in the top 10 in college football with the most difficult schedule. Well, my goodness, you know, for the first time ever, it seems like Arkansas does not have a top 10 most difficult schedule. So either way, it's pretty solid. So going through the games, we'll, we'll do it game by game, but just to give you a little bit of an overview, there are two bye weeks that Arkansas has, one of those bye weeks being October 12th and the other one being November 9th. Uh, they have four SEC home games, three true SEC road games, and of course a neutral side game in Arlington, while they're also playing three non-conference opponents at home in Fayetteville and one in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. So let's go ahead and jump into it. UAPB. That game will be played in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium. It was also moved to a Thursday night. So I'm actually in favor of this. I know some people may not be, especially those who may be in the Central Arkansas area. I'm a fan of this. And the reason I'm a fan of this is because, one, last year's game on that Saturday was so miserable and so hot that it, it, it was bad for everybody. They tried to move up the game time. Nobody was ready. They ran out of water. It was a disaster area, and it was trash. But I'm hoping, because this game being on a Thursday night, one, it's going to be cooler, thank goodness, at least it should be, since it's going to be played at 6 o'clock. But also, it gives you that little extra week and a half to prepare for a really big game, big non-conference game coming up uh, uh, in Stillwater. So, We'll start with UAPB. UAPB is a team that I is an in-state opponent that Arkansas will be playing in Little Rock, and this is going to be the second-to-last game ever that ever gets played in War Memorial Stadium for the Razorbacks because next year they'll be playing Arkansas State. 
But UAPB, this should be a cakewalk of a game. It should be. Arkansas played them a couple of years ago in Little Rock, smoked them. Uh, they played a Western, was it Western Illinois? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, last year. Smoked them, the only game that they actually smoked the other team in. And I don't think this will be any different. Arkansas is going to come out motivated. Petrino is going to have a game plan. They have, Arkansas has better athletes. They have more talented team. And I think this night game and all that, I think everything going along with it, it's going to be an easy win for Arkansas. So they take care of business against UAPB. They get the dub. Now, the next game is Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, without question, to me, and this is something we're going to talk to Barrett Salee about because I'm sure he'll disagree. To me, the Oklahoma State game is the most key game in all of this. Now, it's not an SEC game for sure. But given the circumstances and going up against an Oklahoma State team that is decent, they're always going to be decent. They're, they got some production coming back, but some of it has moved on. They're usually a team that plays better as the year goes on, and in the beginning is when they've had their struggles. But either way, this is going to be the key game for Arkansas and really, to me, the good indicator of what type of season it is going to be. Because if Arkansas goes on the road into Stillwater, into that heat, which we know it's going to be hot as balls going out there, if Arkansas is able to go out there and win, that opens up the door for having a really good year. And when I say a really good year, I'm talking about seven, eight wins. It opens the door up for it. Now, it's not a guarantee, but given the circumstances and given the schedule and given the type of quality teams that you're going to be playing, I believe that it's going to be very difficult. Very difficult. So how does this game go? Well, again, I cannot be held accountable for these predictions later in the year because I have the right to change my mind. That's the most important thing. But folks, as of right now, I think Arkansas goes in and beats Oklahoma State. I really do. I think Arkansas is going to be at its healthiest. I think Arkansas, for the most part, has always played their best football in the beginning of the year under Sam Pittman. I mean, even in 2022, you think about that season that ended 7-6. and six, Like, Arkansas started, though, with a nice win against a really good Cincinnati team. They beat South Carolina pretty handedly, a team that went 8-4 and four that year at home. Uh, then they played Bobby Petrino in Missouri State, needed to come back, but... That's when they were playing their best, and they should have beaten Texas A&M. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda, but still, they usually play their best football in the beginning of the year. They did in 2021, did in 2022, uh, last year, I guess. But still, I think it'll be the same case. And I think Arkansas goes to Oklahoma State and gets a dub. I think they win. And I think people are starting to feel themselves a little bit. It'll be a close game, hard-fought game. Maybe uh, Oklahoma State makes a fumble or has a fumble or a turnover late in the game for Arkansas to get it. But I think Arkansas wins. Now, the next game against UAB at home, you're flying high. You know, you felt good. That Bobby Petrino offense had plenty of time to prepare for Oklahoma State, and they were able to score at will, you know, running running the ball, having great tight end play by Luke Has. The confidence is starting to build, and anytime you go on the road against a Power 5 opponent and able to get a victory, the confidence is always going to be there. However, there is still always the case of a possible letdown. Arkansas will beat UAB. They will beat UAB. But it's not going to be the cleanest of games. That has a game like a game time of like three o'clock written all over it. Still hot outside. Uh, a lot of people maybe not, you know, getting getting after it and getting going and, and all of that. Like maybe there's still some some pieces there because it's like actually the game's at three fifteen uh, for which is also weird. I thought it was three, but it's three fifteen. Okay, uh, but either way, uh, I, I think that that I think that game is going to be a little bit of a meh. You win, but you didn't look crisp. You didn't look good. You know, you win and you end up winning this game like 24 to 13, something like that. Just not great, but good enough to win. And that's really all that matters. And also going back to the Oklahoma State game real quick, since that game's at 11 a.m., uh, I also feel like that always benefits the road team. I could be wrong, but I feel like that usually benefits the road team. So Arkansas starts 3-0. There's my prediction on June 7th, 2024, the year of our Lord. Arkansas starts 3-0. Now comes conference play. And you have a very first game against the Auburn Tigers on the road. That Auburn Tiger team, second year under Q freeze, beat the brakes off of you in your home stadium last year, which, again, I'm not using that as any sort of testing run because I still believe uh, Arkansas mailed it in and they just didn't care. They wanted the season to end. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just going off of what I think. 
But then go on the road to Auburn, and we know about this game, man. This game is always tough. I'm sure the I'm sure the officiating will be perfect, but I think you lose. I think you lose. I think that you go over there, you play decent enough. I think there could be some sort of breakdown, whether it's the the defense is figuring out a way to to get you. Uh, Hugh Freeze has beaten Sam Pittman twice in a row when he was at Liberty and then at Auburn last year. So maybe there's a little bit of a edge, uh, but still, I don't think Auburn's that great of a team. I actually think both of these teams are probably evenly matched, but because it's at Auburn and that's, I don't know, that could be an 11 a.m. game depending on what Auburn does. Odds are, though, it'll be a night game because it's not going to be game of the week. So it could be a night game, which could make the home crowd be very much into it. But I think Arkansas drops that game and they sit there at three and one. Then comes the most interesting but most infuriating game every single year for Razorback fans, Texas A&M in Arlington. How I hate this game and how I used to love it. I used to love it. And now I hate it. I think every Razorback fan hates it. This is the final time Arkansas and A&M will be playing in Arlington. So at least you have that. It's a frustrating one. There's been so many occasions so many times in fact you know it doesn't matter because you didn't win the games but AM has owned Arkansas in this series but I would say 80% of the games Arkansas should have won but they blew a lead they got stupid they did dumb things Bielma blew it you know whatever but every game has been close even Chad Morris for all that is holy Chad Morris Played AM and lost by a touchdown his first year and then lost by four points his next year. And I'm like, wow, like that just shows you. It this game is has always been about, at least when it's played in Arlington, this game has always been about AM being good enough to win and Arkansas being just bad enough to lose. That's how it's been. But you have a new head coach down there at Texas AM. You have Mike Elko, who a lot of people are excited about. Jimbo Fisher got fired. And everything. So here's going to be my little twist into this, folks. I truly believe where it stands right now, again, keep saying this in June 7th, I think Arkansas wins this game. And it's because of Bobby Petrino. This is all I'm basing it off of. Well, maybe some other things. But all I'm basing it off of is this. Bobby Petrino never lost to Texas A&M as head coach at Arkansas. Beat him in 09, 2010, and 2011 in this building. And the other time that he was a part of this game was the offensive coordinator of Texas A&M last year, to which A&M won. So whenever Bobby Petrino, whichever side of the ball, whatever side of the field he is on, in this game in Arlington, his team always wins. Maybe that's too simplistic to look at it, but that's the way I'm choosing. I think Arkansas wins it. I think instead of this game always going against Arkansas, instead of Arkansas blowing it, instead of Arkansas... You know, having that one play, whether it's a return for a touchdown on a fumble at the goal line, a missed field goal, skipper tripper, you know, any of that crap. I believe this is the time that Arkansas beats Texas A&M. In the final game of the Southwest Classic in Arlington, Arkansas wins. They beat Texas A&M. It's a hard-fought matchup. It comes down to the wire. It's really close. But Arkansas gets the win in the end, something like 31-27, some of that nature. And Arkansas gets a little bit of revenge and now feeling pretty good. They're 1-1 one and one in SEC play. So let's bring up the Tennessee Volunteers. All right, you get a finally to get come back home and not have – it's so crazy to me that you don't have your first home SEC game until October. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. You're going to be playing Tennessee in Fayetteville. Now, Tennessee is a team that you have actually had success in the last few times you've played them. In 2020, the COVID season, you came back and you beat them then. Before that, you played them in 2015. You beat them there. I guess, yeah, it was there. It was in Knoxville. Uh, Wasn't pretty, but you beat them. Butch Jones was the coach there. So you beat them then. 2011, we all remember the Joe Adams play. So my point is, is that Arkansas, whenever they've played Tennessee in football, they've actually had a lot of success. So how does that correlate to this team? That's yet to be determined. 
But I'm telling you right now, folks, this game right here has the potential. I know I talked about the Oklahoma State game being crucial to the team's overall success. This game's going to be the most crucial one to raise your back SEC success. Because it is a game that it's a quality team in Tennessee. You know they're going to have offense. You know Josh Heupel is going to score points. You know they're going to take care of business on that front. So what do you do? How do you do it? How do you make this work? Well, it's going to be a barn burner, an absolute barn burner. But I think Arkansas loses. I think that it, their defense wears down. Arkansas's defense wears down in the end. I think it's a high-scoring affair. You got great offensive mind versus great offensive mind. It's a shootout. But Arkansas ends up too little too late. Tennessee maybe scores a touchdown to go ahead, and Arkansas can't get maybe gets a field goal in the next possession. Tennessee scores it to make it a two possession game, and they never look back late in the game. So I think Arkansas loses this one to Tennessee. I could see it being like a 45 to 38 game, something like that. Uh, maybe even higher scoring than that. But it's going to be entertaining. It's going to be entertaining to say the least. So through the first six games for Arkansas, in my opinion, through the first six games, you are four and two. I know, I know. You're probably like, you're smoking crack, John. And that's fine. You can think that. But you're four and two. You get a bye week, and you, then you get LSU at home. Now, coming off of a bye week and playing an LSU team is always great. And this game for the past four straight seasons now has ended with the winning team only winning by three points. Only winning by three points. So it's been weird, to say the least. A weird game. And we'll talk about that game here in just a little bit. But, folks, i got to tell you about our friends over at Alumni Hall. All you Razorback fans out there, I know that you are ready for the summertime to get out there and to start enjoying some golf, enjoying the, the lake, enjoying the beach, doing all that stuff. Well, get you some Razorback gear to represent the Hogs wherever you're in. end up going and get it through Alumni Hall. Because right now they have a great deal going on for all of you. Because if you go to nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall, you have free shipping this weekend. Free shipping this weekend. All you got to do is visit nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall, and they'll take care of shipping for you. So I know a lot of you are trying to, you know, get to the store there in Fayetteville at 3417 North College Avenue, which is easily and conveniently located. So check that out, too. You can do that. But we know that we are global here at Natty State Sports, and people who listen and watch throughout all the country – uh, they and even the world, they want to have the Razorback gear too. So check them out today by going to NightStateSports.com Alumni Hall. They got everything you need. They got Peter Millar. They got Johnny O. They got Columbia. They got Nike. They got men, women's, kids, pets, decor, everything you possibly want. It is the coolest place and is the ultimate Razorback shopping destination. So check them out today. It's Alumni Hall at NattyStateSports.com slash Alumni Hall for free shipping. All right, so LSU. The battle for the golden boot. Sweet. Uh, this game this game has also been one, as I mentioned, has ended in three-point wins. Last year, you went down there to Death Valley and at night, and you lost by three. Lost on the last second field goal by LSU. year before that, uh, in 2022, you lost 13-10 to 10 in the cold weather with Malik Hornsby as your starting quarterback. I think that was the game. Oh, I forgot his name now. I can't believe I did. But whoever that, the guy that was the the defensive end linebacker for LSU that had like 18 sacks in that game. That was a nightmare. So that game ended in three points. Year before that, Arkansas won in overtime down there in Baton Rouge. And by KM Little hitting a field goal and hitting the gritty on the middle of the field. And the year before that in Fayetteville during the COVID season, Arkansas only lost by three. They had no D linemen. So the point is, is that this game is always close. Always close. And it's pretty amazing that three straight games or th four straight years, it's been three point games. However, I think Arkansas loses. I do. I, I know that Arkansas has fought hard, fought well against LSU, but LSU still has a lot of premier talent. And I think LSU is going to come into Fayetteville extremely motivated. I think at that point in time, LSU may still be fighting for something, maybe still be on the line for an SEC title or even uh, you know, playing for the playoff, whatever it may be. But LSU comes in and beats Arkansas. It's, it's hard fought. It's another close game. Who knows? Maybe it ends up being another three-point game. 
But I think Arkansas just makes too many mistakes, and LSU has too talented of a team, especially defensively. So I'm I'm going to take LSU in a close loss, and that puts Arkansas now at four and three. So then you go on the road to Mississippi State. This also this is a team that also has a head coach, new head coach, and Jeff Levy, an offensive guru and an offensive mind and offensive genius. Well, I am so glad, folks, that Arkansas and Mississippi State changed their offensive philosophies and coordinators because, my God in heaven, this game that ended 7-3 to three last year in regulation never needs to be talked about or mentioned again. But I'm going to keep doing it because I want to remind everybody just how terrible it was. I want you to be despair in my misery for having to be there for that game and watch that game. But this game's going to be there in Starkville. Now, Mississippi State may be one of the teams that gets picked to finish low, but they are going to be a team that it seems like a classic old-school Big 12 Texas Tech type of team where they can load up 50 points a game, but they give up 45. And I think that's going to be the same case in this one for Arkansas and Mississippi State. It's probably going to be an 11 a.m. game in Starkville, and you're going to have two teams going at it with a high scoring, high high scoring affair, and it's just going to be insane. It's going to be insane. But I do believe Arkansas wins. I think the Arkansas offensive philosophy with Bobby Petrino, all of that, it's again high scoring, maybe a lot of back and forth, and everyone's complaining about the defense on their on their twitters. But I think Arkansas will be a better team. I think that they make some plays defensively. Maybe even get a pick or two, and Arkansas's offense scores whatever they want. They can pick their score against Mississippi State. That's how I feel it goes down. Arkansas wins that game on the road against Mississippi State, and now they're sitting at five and three overall. Now comes a very interesting game: the Arkansas Ole Miss game. Ole Miss is going to be a really good football team this year, folks. Lane Kiffin's a good coach. You know, I kept trying to hope and pray that he would leave Ole Miss. But he hasn't. And since 21, he's gone 10 wins, 8 wins, 10 wins in three straight years. He's got it going there at Ole Miss. I hate to admit it, but he does. And so, as much as he has it going there at Ole Miss, it's still weird to me that Arkansas does one of two things against Lane Kiffin. They either beat the crap out of their team, out of Ole Miss, or... They barely lose a hard-fought matchup. Like, Ole Miss doesn't blow out Arkansas since Lane Kiffin's been there. I don't know if it's just a coincidence. I don't know if it's just about the matchup. I don't know. Like, there's so many things that it could be. But last year, Arkansas went into Oxford at night and had probably one of their best defensive performances against a big-time great offense. And you could tell that Arkansas's offense in that game, that's when the frustration started to boil over. It It was a mess. The last two times that Arkansas has played Ole Miss in Fayetteville was in 2020 and 2022. In 2020, y'all remember that, Matt Corral threw six interceptions in a game in regulation. And Hudson Clark, the no-fly zone, had three of them. And then in 2022, Arkansas was an all right team. I mean, they had been doing okay. And Ole Miss was better. Ole Miss was a better team. And they walk into Fayetteville and they get smoked. Smoked. It was 35 to 7 at halftime. I'll never forget it, but tailgating all day, freezing cold. It was a night game. And Arkansas just, I, I think, even in the first play of the second half, because Arkansas scored the final touchdown with just seconds to go before halftime, go 34, 35 7. Then Arkansas got the ball back. And then, like, the first play from scrimmage, Rocket Sanders takes it to the house, and they're up 42 7. I mean, just blitzkrieged them. I don't think this is going to happen again in this game. I don't. But Arkansas is undefeated against Ole Miss at home. Arkansas plays really well against Ole Miss at home. So I'm going to go off of history. I'm going to go off the tradition. I'm going to say Arkansas wins this game. They upset Ole Miss because I think Ole Miss, again, is going to be a really good team. I know Ole Miss fans hate playing Arkansas because even in their best years, it seems like you know, like they just Arkansas gives them all that they want. And I have some bunch of old Miss friends, friends that have talked about this. They're like they hate the game against Arkansas because 
It just doesn't make sense, which I agree. It never makes sense. There's no logic or reasoning behind it. But I think Arkansas takes care of business. I think they get it done. Uh, I still believe that it'll be a close game. Maybe closer. It's not going to be blowout city. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw that out there, but it's going to be a pretty close game. And Arkansas does more. They maybe get an interception. They, you know, make a play, get a, get a fourth down stock. Cause you know how Lane Kiffin loves to go for it on fourth down, something like that, that changes the momentum late in the game and Arkansas takes care of business. So now they're sitting at six and three folks. They have made it. They have made it to bowl eligibility here in the, what, first nine games of the season? Bowl eligibility. They're going to a bowl game. How about that? How about that? But then they got a lot more coming up next. A lot more coming up next. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. But, folks, I got to tell you, during the bye week of the discussion here, you need to make sure that uh, you are getting all of your stuff squared away for the summertime whether it's your new pool that you're trying to install or whether it's a fencing or drainage or anything like that. And you need to do it with superior contracting and development out of Arkansas. They're licensed residential commercial contractors specializing in all aspects of home building and remodeling, whether it's fencing, drainage, additions to remodeling of your existing structure, all the way to land development and ground up construction. You can call them for the interior, exterior construction and remodeling needs. It's as simple as that. And also right now, we know that there's still people recovering from the awful storms that went through the state of Arkansas and also in the region well, insurance companies are required to restore homes to their pre-storm condition. That's what they're required to do. So Superior is seasoned in working with all the insurance companies and helping homeowners get everything that they should be getting out of their insurance claims. And if you mention the fact that uh, you heard them from Natty State Sports, they'll be able to, uh, they'll take a little extra care of you. And, you know, they, they're good people over there. And they always make sure that they get everybody here in the Natty State taken care of. But not just there, because there's also storm damage that's in northwest Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. And they can help you and take care of it all. So give them a call today at 501-453-3053. That's 501-453-3053. You can also visit their new website at superiorcontractingar.com. No matter what it is when it comes to your interior and exterior needs, do it with Superior Contracting and Development at 501-453-3053. All right, so here we are, final stretch of the season. Arkansas is 6-3, and three, bowl eligibility, baby. And they're going into a bye week. Much needed bye week, I'm sure. Maybe they're dinged up at places. They're losing a little bit of depth. People are needing a break. And they head into November 9th into the bye week as they get prepared for what will be a very important stretch down the line for Arkansas. And how do they get welcomed after this bye week? The Texas Longhorns. One more time, horns. So Texas comes to town. Texas is going to be one of the best teams picked in the preseason. Texas was a really good team last year, made it to the playoff. And this is going to be their first year in the SEC. Arkansas, last time they played Texas, and Steve Sarkeesian beat the brakes off of them in 2021. Different times, different seasons, different teams. Texas has... Not just one elite quarterback in Quinn Ewers, but two because Arch Manning is their backup. One reason I mention that is because even if something happened to Quinn Ewers, which nobody wants to see, but even if something did, they got a guy that's still pretty good. So they're loaded with talent. They have all the pieces. And I think that's going to showcase itself in Fayetteville. I think Arkansas loses this game. Uh, I think the, the atmosphere will be electric. I think it'll be next level it'll be loud it'll be insane hopefully it ends up being a, a a night game that would be ideal especially there in november being late nights be cold but i think texas takes care of business because as as much as i think atmospheres play a part in it and all of that texas is just too good they are just too good and i think they're going to be too good this year i think arkansas gives them what they all they can handle but Texas pulls away in the end, something like 35-24. But they lose to Texas. And kind of a bummer. So Arkansas sitting at 6-4 and four now on the season. Then they face Louisiana Tech at home. Kind of the warm-up before the rivalry week, if you want to call it that. But they're playing a lot of non-conference game at home. Arkansas, I think, wins this game. It's senior night. 
final game at home. You know that it, it's going to be your last hurrah for a lot of these players. And Arkansas looks good. Shows out. You know, one of those games that they open it up as a, just winning and beating them handedly, and they don't look back. So Arkansas gets to that seventh win. That seventh win. They're sitting at seven and four on the year. Then finally comes Missouri on the road. Everyone's favorite game. I've been in arguments with Missouri fans all day long today on Twitter because of the comments from Barrett Salee talking about how when he thinks of Arkansas as a rival, he thinks of LSU. And Missouri fans are still just clamoring and fighting for the fact that they want Arkansas and Missouri to be a rival. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they do. And they think that's all because Arkansas thinks that they're above Missouri. I'm like, I don't think it's just that. I know a lot of people do, even though Missouri's had a lot more success. But also, nobody likes being forced into anything. and just It just feels too forced. That's been my whole thing about the Arkansas-Missouri rivalry. It's like, when as soon as it happened, it was BS because they, Arkansas lost to LSU, which was actually butting into a really good rivalry that had a lot of history between the two programs. And they're like, oh, here's Missouri. Oh, so you didn't, nobody, nobody, nobody wanted that change. They did. And... That's what happened. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it happens, okay, here's a trophy. And it's sponsored. It's like, okay. Like, this this is just such a forced thing. There's no reason for it. There's no reason for it to happen. And ever since then, anytime you're in a forced deal, if you were in a forced marriage, even if it starts to kind of work out or even if it starts to feel like, eh, you know, maybe there is a little bit of something here, it's still going to just always leave you because the first impression is always the biggest one. And Arkansas has just felt that way. And... Again, like the amount of rival comments and stuff was just been hysterical for me from Missouri fans. But either way, Missouri's beaten Arkansas most, more often than not. And honestly, until Arkansas finds a way to beat Missouri, I'm probably going to pick Arkansas to lose this game. I hate to say it, but it's true. You know, most of the time that Arkansas has been a better team, this is the thing that also Missouri fans are too stupid to understand. And when I, I'm going to do this on my why I hate certain teams. I'm going to do it about Missouri. But here's the thing that why Missouri fans are so dumb. When I made those comments last year on Michael Bratton's podcast about Arkansas, the reason that I was mentioning this game and how Razorback fans hate this game is because even in more cases than not, not all, but in more cases than not, when Arkansas felt like they were the better team and they were the better team, they lose the game. That happens all the time in sports, folks. It's not uncommon. You know, there were times when Missouri was, you know, that year, I guess in 2016, they were 0 and 7. And Arkansas lost that game at the end of the year. There was no doubt that Arkansas was a better football team overall, but they lost the game. And that's why it's frustrating. And my point that I was trying to make last year, because I didn't think Arkansas was going to beat Missouri when they started playing, getting into the end of the season last year. But that was my point is Missouri was a good team last year. Arkansas wasn't. And if Arkansas would have beaten Missouri last year, Missouri fans probably would have been pretty pissed off and upset. Why? Because they were a better team than Arkansas and they should have won. That's the whole thing. But Missouri fans are too stupid to understand that, I guess. Either way, uh, it's the final game of the year. And obviously, uh, Drinkwitch is weird. You know, he's he's got a weird side to him. He's always talking about, uh, like, he's he's one of the biggest hypocrites, I think, that's in college sports. Like, he talks about, I'll never forget, and I've talked about this before. He talked about the uh, thing against Florida and Dan Mullen when that fight broke out between Florida and Missouri a few years ago. And then Dan Mullen came in dressed as Darth Vader because it was the Halloween night. And everyone was like, ah, it's kind of weird. But then, you know, Eli Drink, which is like, yeah, douchebaggery breeds douchebaggery. Or jackassery breeds jackassery. Talking about him and the way he handled himself. But yet, this is the same coach that talks a bunch of noise that, you know, goes up to Josh Heupel and say, we stand on business and then runs away. Because of some, I guess people are like, oh, his players want him to do it. And I'm like, okay, that shows you kind of how... Like, so you talk about jackassery breeds jackassery, but yet you can act like a jackass. Gotcha. Okay. So anyways, uh, this is a game that Arkansas loses more often than not. And until Arkansas finds a way to win, I'm not going to pick them. Last time Arkansas played Missouri in Fayetteville, they won. Uh, so there's at least that to hold your hat on, I guess. And I don't know. It's kind of crazy because well, I guess not last or last year in Fayetteville, they lost. No, sorry. That's all I meant. So they've won one time in favor. That was a couple of years ago. They lost last year because Arkansas again mailed in the year. But 
this is a year though that I think Missouri, this is what's gonna be interesting about them too, is like I don't know how they're going to look. Like everyone's pumping them up, but they've only had one good year under Drinkwitz. Like last year was his first winning season. So who knows? Maybe they have a big letdown. Maybe they're actually good, but I think that they're going to not be as good last year uh, as they were last year. But I still think just because they like Drinkwitz really cares about that game a lot and everything, I think I think Missouri wins until I'm proven otherwise. But of course, I'm sure when if Arkansas wins, then Missouri will of course take it very well and everything. So, anyways, I think Arkansas loses. So there you have it. I went through game by game. I went through a long time on this, but that's how I feel. I feel that this is going to be a seven and five year for Arkansas. Uh, where I'm at right now on June 7th, that's how I feel. Arkansas goes three and five in SEC play with their three wins coming against AM, coming against Ole Miss and Mississippi State. And I believe they win all their non-conference games. They go seven and five, end up going to a bowl game like, I don't know, hopefully it'd be nice if they go to Nashville for the Music City Bowl. They, that's the game that has the SEC ties that they haven't been to in so long. Like they went one time and was it 02 and they've got beat by Minnesota pretty badly. So anyways, it'd be nice to go to Nashville. Just not Memphis. I'm tired of Memphis. I'm tired of Liberty Bowl. Not that. Um, Vegas Bowl would be cool. I don't know if they'd get that, but I, I take it straight up. I take it straight up right now. I'd be all about that. So anyways, there you have it. Hopefully that makes sense for all you folks, and I'm sure you'll completely and totally 100% agree with me with no problems whatsoever. I'm sure that is the case. Uh, but uh, first off, though, as part of uh, what we do here at United States Sports, i got to tell you about our friends over at Signature Bank. Signature Bank is the place to do your banking, no matter what it is when it comes to your personal or business. It's the bank to do business with here in Arkansas. That's why we use them here at Natty State Sports. We trust them, and they are the type of people that will always help us out with no matter what it is that we need. And when it comes to any sort of banking and protecting our money, making sure it's safe, sound, and secure, they'll do it. Whether it's helping us out with loans, they'll do it. And when you walk into their bank, you're going to feel the atmosphere come to you as well. Everyone's so friendly. There's never a face that they've never seen, and they always will appreciate you and what you do. So when you walk in there, Tell them that Natty State Sports sent you. And there's a reason why we do our banking with them, because they're the best. And they're Arkansas-driven, right out of Fayetteville. So check them out today with all their convenient locations across Northwest Arkansas, but you can also check them out online at Signature.Bank. That's www.Signature.Bank. But no matter what it is, when it comes to your banking, do it with Signature Bank, the official bank of Natty State Sports. <laughs> 